Hi there, and welcome to this video about understanding how modern provisioning works in SharePoint Online. Just to set the context, let me remind you that in the SharePoint add-in model, we used to rely on the SharePoint feature framework for classic provisioning of content and artifacts. What do I mean? Well, we used to use the CAMEL-based and XML-based provisioning model, which was able to create, uh, for example, new set columns, new content types, new list definitions, new views and schemas using the SharePoint feature framework. This model was really good for the initial provisioning of artifacts, was not really good when you needed to upgrade on the go the artifacts you already deployed. Moreover, in the SharePoint add-in model, the out-of-the-box experience was based on the extensibility and the provisioning of artifacts in the app site of the add-in that you created, while in order to provision artifacts in the host site, you needed to use the client object model of SharePoint, whether using JSON or CSOM, and to do remote provisioning of artifacts. In the SharePoint framework uh, modern development uh, uh, world, now we still have the SharePoint feature framework provisioning with a modern experience, meaning that we can use it in our modern solutions, but under the cover, we still have the SharePoint feature framework, so still we have the elements and the feature files in order to provision artifacts. And even if less than before, but we still have to struggle a bit whenever we need to do maintenance on the go of the solutions that we deployed. So that's why nowadays we usually rely on the remote provisioning based on the PMP provisioning engine, where the PMP provisioning engine is a remote provisioning engine built and provided by the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community as an open source effort. And it relies internally on the REST APIs of SharePoint Online and on CISOM when needed. It can be used either as a library uh, through the PMP framework library, so you can create your own provisioning solutions with .NET and reference the PMP framework library, or you can simply use the PMP PowerShell commandlets and do the actual provisioning and maintenance of your artifacts just using a bunch of PowerShell scripting. What is interesting to notice is that with the remote PMP provisioning engine, you can also easily do maintenance on the go because under the cover, the engine will take care of delta handling. So whenever there will be an update on a template, you can simply apply the template again onto a target site and the engine will do the delta handling and will apply the delta changes to the target site, upgrading the information architecture to the latest release that you defined. That said, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to use these functionalities in practice. This is an old SharePoint add-in model solution in which we have uh, some artifacts provisioned uh, through the uh, package of the solution. Specifically here, you can see the feature that is going to be deployed through the add-in model solution. And as you can see, there are custom fields, like for example, a customer code field, a customer email field, and a customer type field, which are used by a customer content type. And the customer content type itself is then used in a customer's list, where we have the schema of the list, the feature element to create that list as a list template, and then the instance of the customer list. So now let's see how we can do the same with the SharePoint Framework as the first step. So let me switch to uh, Visual Studio Code and here we have a SharePoint Framework solution in which under the SharePoint folder, Asset subfolder, I have a schema and an elements.xml files. In the elements.xml file, I have the definition of the same fields we had before in the SharePoint Admin model. So we have the customer code field, we have the customer email field, and the customer type field, as like as they were in the SharePoint Admin model solution. Then we have the definition of the content type for the customer with the field references, and then we have the list instance. 
Now, one of the biggest differences is that right now in this SharePoint Framework solution, we are going to provision these artifacts into the site where we are going to install the SharePoint Framework solution, while in the add-in model solution, the artifacts were deployed in the app site and not in the host site. So now, when I have such a feature XML file and this schema XML file for the list instance of customers, we can then have those items referenced in the uh, package, in the SharePoint Framework package, so that if we create uh, with gulp bundle dash dash ship and gulp package solution dash dash ship uh, the SPPKG file of our solution, which is this, this one, uh, we can then go to the uh, uh, app catalog of our tenant and in the manage app section of our tenant we can upload like I already did the SharePoint framework package into the app catalog and we can enable it so that if we go into a target site we can go to site contents and we can click on new app from here, we can see the package, the SPPKG package that I just showed you and I just created, and we can add it to the target site collection in which we are. It will take a while, and once it, it will be ready, we can go back to the site contents, and we can see that when it will be done, we will have the list of customers properly provisioned in this target site collection. So let me try to refresh this view just for the sake of saving some time. And precisely, you can see that now I have the list of customers and the list of customers is based on a content type, which I can find if I will go to the site settings in the site content types, I will be able to find the customer that I just provisioned using the SPFX solution. Here it is, customer with the custom fit. So this is really a powerful way of doing the provisioning. But when we do provisioning using the feature framework, we need to face the fact that the maintenance of the provisioned artifacts is not always that easy. In fact, when you want to later on update your data structure, there are some options to do maintenance, but there are no plenty of options to do proper maintenance of artifacts. And that why, that's why usually you should rely on the remote provisioning pattern and eventually rely on the PMP provisioning engine in order to have the handling of the delta changes and of the updates to the uh, target artifacts. So let me show you a provisioning template that I created using the PMP provisioning engine that we can use to apply our logic. And first of all, in order to create that template, you simply need to have a site where you already created your data structure. So like for example, this one in which I have created a customer list and as like as the one we provisioned with SharePoint framework, we have in the collection of content types of my site a content type called customer which I define for example using the web browser and in which I define a reference few custom columns which are defined right here in the site columns of my site. So if you want to generate a template starting from this list and content type and columns you can simply use the PMP provisioning engine and PMP PowerShell to connect to a target site, the one where you defined eventually with the browser the artifacts you want to extract. And then you can use the get PMP site template command let of PMP PowerShell. The output will be an XML file on your file system. And for example, you can extract the list of customers and you want to extract uh, the uh, artifacts using the handles for fields, so site columns, the content types and the lists. So at the very end, by executing these two uh, command lets, you will have an XML file <coughs> with the template of the customer list and with the content type of customer and with the custom fields for the customer. This is the XML extracted by the get PMP site template. As you can see here, we have a bunch of site fields where we have the customer type, the customer code and the customer email. And you can most likely recognize that this is still the same XML we used to see before in the add-in model and in the SharePoint framework solution. Then we have the content type definition. And again, this XML looks really like the other one. And we have the field drafts for the fields we defined. And then we have the list instance of customers 
with the binding to the content type of the customer, with eventually any custom views and with the field references. So now, if we uh, use a target site, like for example this one, which I just created, we can apply that template to this target site. So let me show you the uh, PowerShell syntax. You still need to connect to the target. This could be the URL of the target site you want to use. And then you have to invoke the PMP site template providing the path of the XML file you want to use. So let's connect first of all and run the first line of this script. So right click and we can run the selection. It will connect to the target environment and then we can invoke the PMP site template providing the XML file that we want to apply. So again, right click, run selection. It will take a while and it will provision remotely all of the artifacts to the target site. So we will end up having the content type, the site columns, referenced by the content type and the list definition and the list instance. The provisioning is now complete. So we can move back to the site and we can see that by refreshing the site contents on the site, we can see that we have a list of customers still with the same fields and still in the site we have the same content type and signed columns that we have seen before. Now, the interesting part of the story right now is that we can eventually do maintenance. So we can change the XML template by adding new fields or new stuff and we will be able to apply the template as many times as we need onto the target and the PMP provisioning engine will take care of processing the delta changes and on updating the target uh, environment with the new changes and with the new fields and with the new artifacts. Here you can find additional links about the topics that we covered. And like always, thank you for watching this video.